same stream. And there he is entering the blue corner, Robert Puchetta. And Doug, I got a text from one Abel Sanchez, who is not in the corner of Boachuk tonight because he's with Ryan Blue Chip Martin in Glasgow, Scotland. He says 2.30 in the morning, Scotland. You and Dougie sound great. Wish I was there. Viva, Dr. Abel Sanchez. And good luck Saturday in Glasgow. Real fight. That's a, that's a hell of a yeah. fight. I tell you what, Josh Taylor is the favorite but Taylor cannot afford to overlook or underestimate blue chip Ryan Martin, who, by the way, headlined the yeah. first edition yes, of Hollywood Fight Nights. And his opponent finally got to the red corner, making his way to the ring, Humberto Rubalacaba. And coming into the red corner is a man from Orange, California, 23 years old. Had a bit of a layoff in 2018. His last outing took place at the hangar in Costa Mesa on February 15th, where he scored a third round stoppage of Ricardo Cuellar. And tonight, he makes his return to the Avalon in Hollywood. Have you watched him fight live before, Steve? No, I can't say that I have. And one thing about him, even though He's early on in his career, has not been very active. Two fights in 2017, two more in 2016, and before that he began his career with three bouts in 2015. So it's very interesting, this career arc. Uh, you do wonder how committed he is to this boxing profession. Well, they got to get going. Yep. He, he's 23, there's still time. I've heard good things about him, though. All right, we're ready to go. Let's go back up to Mr. Joe Martinez. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, once again, six rounds this scheduled in the featherweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, trimmed in white, he weighed in officially 123 pounds. This veteran of 25 professional fights hails from Ciudad de Mexico, presentando Roberto Escorpión Pocheta. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, trimmed in white, weighed in 120 and three corner pounds. In eight professional fights, he stands perfect with eight victories. No defeats, six wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated featherweight from Orange, California, Humberto Fili Rualacaba. And your referee in charge of the action is Eddie Hernandez. Get a look at the tail of the tape. Rubalcava is the younger man at age 23. He is much taller at 5'9, 5 inches taller, and he has a slight reach advantage. All right, as we begin the action between Rubalcava and Puchetta, Miss Cynthia Conte, I understand, has a very special guest. All right, well, look who I found wandering around here at Hollywood Fight Nights. If you don't know, you better know. It is Miss Cecilia Brake, who's the only undefeated, undisputed, and ring belt champion. Cecilia Brake, I'm so excited. I love, I love women's boxing, and you're here. First fight night, first Hollywood yeah. fight nights. How is it? How do you feel here? Well, I love the concept. It's uh, something very unique, and uh, I think it's going to be an amazing evening. So, um, yeah. Just uh, watch some great fights and uh, really looking forward. Why aren't you in costume tonight? I'm kind of sad. You could have, you know, we could have been blue and red icy. Wins. Yeah, yeah. No, I am not in costume because I'm here for my training camp and uh, basically that uh, that's coming first. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
How are, how are the fights so far tonight? Um, did you see any of the knockouts, the yeah, early knockouts? I saw the knockouts, and uh, they are pretty vicious, and uh, there's a high level of entertainment here, so I'm very happy I could take some time off to uh, my training schedule and come here. I, I really like this uh, concept, so okay. I'm having a great time. Can you tell us a little bit something, because I know you're fighting December 8th. Yeah. Don't worry, your promoter's not listening. Can you say, I know you can't tell us who you're fighting, but anything more? I'm sorry, I cannot do that. No one will know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll let you get back to the fights. All right, guys, Cecilia Brego, she's fighting December 8th. We don't know who and we don't know where. All right, guys, back to you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Cynthia and Ms. Brekus. We are here in round number one between Ruba Kalba and Puchetta. Scheduled for six rounds in the featherweight class. One thing that's noticeable, Doug, about Ruba Kalba, he just has that fighter's look, though. Just look at his frame and the way he boxes. He, he does look like a guy you wonder, why hasn't he been more committed in terms of actually fighting a bit more? Yeah, outside the ring, if you see him with his glasses on, he just looks like one of those nerds um, that can also box. He kind of has a, a, a personality like Mikey Garcia. Um, and his style is that of, of, a, of a technical, economical puncher. And as a matter of fact, his favorite fighters are guys like Juan Manuel Marquez, Floyd Mayweather, Mikey Garcia, guys who are very smart and calculating yeah. in the ring. And he wisely ties up the Mexican journeyman whenever Puchetta gets in close. Um, Puchetta is, is not an old journeyman by any stretch of the imagination. He's, he's 28, so he still has some athleticism. And he's got the experience of 20, 25 pro bouts. Yeah, and Ruba Colva has eight fights in about what? three four years as a professional you know as a four to six round fighter you generally want to have six to eight in one year absolutely so it's been a very slow pace for a young ruba Calva out of orange california All right, we begin round number two, and I'm not so sure you can hear the background music, but that is one Easy E playing in the background. Yeah, is that Easy Does It? <laughs> yeah. I think it's the radio version. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Now Rubakalva going into the left-handed stance here as he begins round number two. Looking at Puchetta's record, he's one and nine in his last ten, so he's been on a bit, bit of a skid. Some notable names on his ledger, including Diego De La Hoya and Kevin Rivers. Yeah, and he went six rounds with Kevin Rivers Jr., who was a good amateur, um, and eight rounds with Diego De La Hoya, and Diego is a top contender in the 122-pound division. And if you go back some years with Pachetta, he went 10 rounds with Felipe Oracuda, yeah. who recently went a hard tw uh, 12 rounds with uh, Juan Estrada. So he's been in there, he's been in tough, and he's gone rounds, quality rounds. Uh, Rubicalva, I believe he's never been past six rounds. Pachetta has an upside down record, 10, 14, and one. It is what it is, but keep this in mind, 25 professional battles and some notable names. He's only been stopped once, so if, if anything, he is durable. And he doesn't seem intimidated by the young prospect. Having his moments yeah. here in the second round. Nice overhand right landed by the veteran. And it was a, a sort of a, a jab yeah. hook landed by Puchetta. Rubicalva's yeah. going to have to get that, that well, left stick going. Keep yeah, this, it, this older man off him. And he may want to get off the ropes. Yeah. 
Rubicalva has that poise that we noted in uh, Corona, in Adrian Corona, but he needs to let his hands go a little yeah. bit more. He might be a little bit too poised. Maybe a little too economical yeah. with those punches. Well, Pacheta's having a really good round number two here. Most of the significant punches have been landed by the Mexican veteran out of Jalisco. And he's proving to be an elusive yeah. target with that upper body movement. One thing about Pacheta, when he lets his hands go, he like there's an arc to him. He likes to wing those shots, so that creates an opportunity for uh, the young prospect to time straight shots right down the middle, you know, jabs and straight rights. As Rubicalva goes back to the corner, you get the sense his training staff is probably advising to keep things in the center of the ring right there. And there's yeah. a left hook catching Puchetta coming in. They may have tripped their feet together, but that was certainly a solid left hook over the top by Rubicalva. And that's the end of round number two and a big finish for Rubicalva who turns things around. It looked like a 10-9 round for Pucheta. Now most likely it is 10-8 for the young kid out of Orange, California. And that's professional boxing. He was out hustled the entire round. Pucheta was the aggressor and then maybe 20 seconds left yeah. in the round, he runs into a left hook, gets dropped automatically. It's Rubicalva's round. As we see highlights of this knockdown. Yeah, and that was just Puchetta rushing in a little haphazardly. And excellent timing. That was a counter left hook from Rubicalva. Yeah. Let's see if that knockdown yeah. woke up Rubicalva. Yeah. And you spoke to his inactivity, and maybe there was some ring rust yeah. to, be, to be knocked off. He's got to get warmed up. Right, and even at this level, if you just take a scope at the scope of 2018, he's basically had an eight, nine-month layoff. I mean, for a six-round fighter, you know, in an eight-month stretch, you generally want at least two or three other fights. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And maybe some of that ring rust is why he, he was nailed by Puchetta earlier in the second round. But definitely he got an adrenaline rush dropping the veteran with that compact counter left hook. Well, it's a much more aggressive and forceful Ruba Kalba here at the beginning of round number three. And I like seeing that because I noted as Puchetta returned to his corner, he wasn't on steady legs. Yeah. And they were a little bit shaky. So maybe there's still some cobwebs in his head, and it's good for the young prospect to go out there and test the legs of the older man. But I would imagine Pachetta is a survivor. He knows how to survive tough moments. a money punch for Rubicalva, Doug, it seems to be that left hook. He can lead with it, and he throws that counter check hook. He's got a lot of snap and a lot of torque. One of these tall, lanky guys that could really snap off left hooks. And I wasn't expecting that giving his frame. I was thinking yeah. his best punches would be his jab, and his best power punch would be the straight right. But just because you're tall and rangy doesn't mean you're Tommy Hearns. Yeah, and you can and see the skill of Rubicalva. He has a good technical base good fundamental grounding. But again, you do wonder moving forward, does he need to be more active? Absolutely, but in terms of technique, he's yeah. as good as advertised. I've, I've heard good things about him. It's great to be able to see him live. And he's not in easy. Yeah. You know, Puchetta was undeterred from being dropped at the end of the last round and, and being beat on early in this round. Puchetta's still in there swinging. And Pachetta's still in there landing, too. Yes. 
Rubicalva is in with a game opponent. Not just experience, Puchet is here to win. So there it is, halfway through, we are scheduled for six, three down in the books between Rubicalva and Puchetta. And you take a look at the venue, the historic Avalon in Hollywood. This is our fourth edition of the Hollywood Fight Night. Always a fun, lively crowd. Tonight is a Halloween-themed edition. Tom Lotler says $100 to his favorite Halloween costume. No, me and Dougie are not oh, eligible. Darn Doggone it. it. <laughs> And we begin round number four here. Ruba Kalva most likely on top of the scorecard, scoring a knockdown late in round number two against the veteran Puchetta. Doug, did you happen to see Regis Progrera's victory over Terry Flanagan? I thought he showed that he could box methodically and patiently if yes. need be. Yeah, he was very calculating. He was careful in there. Um, it looked like he would get the, the knockout after he dropped the uh, Manchester, England native in the eighth round. Um, but I think he wanted to take his time with this fight. I, I think he wanted to prove to the boxing world that he can do more than punch. He can do more than mix it up, that he can box a disciplined fight and go 12 rounds, and he did just that. And what a game performance by Anthony Can You Jig It. Wow. Uh, literally what a scra that is the definition of scrappy, that, yeah. that southpaw from, is, is it Denmark? Yes. Was it Denmark or I some believe, No, yeah. no, I think he, he's Sweden, yeah. but he had to fight out of Denmark because Sweden had limitations on professional boxing. And I think he's a European. I'd like, you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see Anthony Jig It against uh, Antonio Orozco. Ooh. Both guys are coming off losses, but both guys showed so much character in taking those L's. Yeah, now Ivan Baranchik, I know a lot of people are penciling in Josh Taylor, who fights Blue Chip Martin this weekend, and of course Regis Progrer. Uh, I think Baranchik is a dark horse in yes, that he tournament. Is. He's definitely the dark horse. The By two the way, favorites are, is, is Progrey and Taylor. They are numbers one and two in Ring Magazine's junior welterweight rankings. But Baranchek is also a legit top 10 contender. Um, and he's probably going to get better after winning his first major pro title. Do you think Yigit with that eye didn't need to buy a Halloween mask? No. <laughs> I, heard, I heard a bunch of Quasimodo <laughs> references. And, and credit to Yigit, he, he's taking it with good humor. Yeah. But it just goes to show you it's not just about winning uh, in the game of professional boxing. Um, you can lose and your stature can still yeah. raise if you give 100%. And you love to see that. Ruba Calva for a tall, lanky guy, Doug, does a nice job of fighting on the inside. Kind of reminiscent of uh, Diego, of our, Corrales. Diego Corrales, one of our personal favorites. Oh, good left hook off the rope. Corrales had a, a beautiful, powerful, compact left hook. And Ruba Calva, he cranks that punch very well. You can see Ruba Calva getting going here in the last 30 seconds, mixing it up on the inside with the game, Puchetta. That was a nice uppercut yeah. from Ruba Calva. And Puchetta, yeah, he stays spirited. And once again, we are coming live from the Avalon in Hollywood. Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions presents Hollywood Fight Nights is our fourth edition. This was the inaugural year of this program. And according to Tom, in 2019, they will be coming back. And Tom told me a couple months ago, he might be expanding the show to other markets. Interesting. 
it's good news for, for young fighters, for fighters at that four and six round level. There's no progression without no, activity. No, absolutely. So we begin round number five here. Ruva Calva starting to pour it on a little bit against the game gutty Puchetta. We are scheduled for six. I like the aggressive nature, the aggressive version of Ruba Calva. We saw the calculating counter punching, counter puncher technician in the early rounds. And after scoring that knockdown, he's uh, stepped up his uh, aggression. And he's proven, proven to fight just as effectively as, as an aggressor and on the inside as he was as a counter puncher on the outside. Nice bounce in his legs, good balance from Rubakalva. He's got some head and upper body movement. He's loose in there. And you can, you can definitely tell he's a thinking fighter. He doesn't fight on emotion. Yes. Very he's, calculating. Yes. That's he's, the way I describe he's, him. He's controlled even when he's letting his hands go. It seems like uh, Rubicalva has figured out Pachetta. He's definitely figured out the offense of Puchetta. He knows what to expect from the journeyman. And he's doing a better job of evading those those haymakers. Yeah, and Clash it, looks your like, heads. it looks like they may have clashed heads there. I don't see blood on either. Oh, well, hold on. Let's, let's take a look here. The referee, Eddie Hernandez, looks at both men, and it looks like Rubacalva got worse for wear. He looks a little bit dazed. Yeah, it hurt. From the clash of noggins between the two, they're gonna call back the action with under a minute to go here in round number five. You know what, just because there's no blood, just because the skin doesn't break, doesn't mean that you don't well, get rattled. There doesn't is mean actually, you don't feel that in your damn teeth when there your head's There is clash. actually a little bit of blood trickling down the right cheek, or there was, from Ruva Calva. Okay, so maybe he, there is a nick from uh, on Ruva Calva. That's the end of round number five, and Rubicalva's corner and cut man have to get to work. It looks like that cut emanates from the bridge of the nose next to his right eye. See if we can get a closer look at that. And Doug, that's a substantial cut. That is actually over the brow near the center of the face. So that is certainly a real cut suffered by young Rubicalva. Yeah, so he's gonna have to deal with some adversity in this sixth and final round. And we'll see how he handles it. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the sixth and final round. Talking about the toughness of Puchetta, Zufa boxing page, fan page, BoxRec Ray, one of the great sources of information on Twitter, says Puchetta's opponent's record in all his losses, 170, 26, and eight. That says a lot, that's a strong strength of schedule. Absolutely.
Doug, I think with the nature of that cut, given the fact he's probably winning this fight, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ruvacalva get into the Dean Smith, the four corners. That's offense. okay. He's, he, he's. I think, you know, with his height and reach, he could be effective yeah. on the outside. And we're seeing him work his jab from a distance, and that's a smart thing. You definitely want to avoid uh, another clash of head, uh, particularly um, over the, the right eye socket. You don't want to get a clash of heads in the same place. And Doug, that'll open I, it up even worse. As I look at my nose, there's actually a drop of blood from right. Rubicalva. There it is, yeah. Certainly, Price has been paid by Rubicalva in a fight that he's basically controlled tactically. He's had some few rough moments, but he's also shown a pretty good offensive arsenal here in what is just his ninth professional bout. Six rounds of quality work from a real journeyman. Yeah. Not, not an opponent, a journeyman yeah. that, that tries his best. Now obviously, you bring in a guy, and he is the quintessential Mexican journeyman that is supposed to lose against the undefeated prospect, but guys like Puchetta, they don't go quietly. You got to show them something. So it's what you call professional resistance. Yeah. And that's what forces a young prospect to develop. Under a minute to go here, sixth and final oh, round. Good wow. uppercut. Yeah, and it was set up by a nice jab. Well, Rubicalva certainly isn't just running out the clock here. Neither is Pachetta. Pachetta is still in there working. Neither man is, is coasting, and you like to see that. Whoa, Puchetta actually just ran into, ran Rubicalva right into a shot here. Yeah, Puchetta's landed um, after that yeah. shot, too. It was a, it was a, there was an uppercut, and there was a left hook. Yeah, Rubicalva didn't mind his P's and Q's in, t in terms of the distance and spacing. Yeah, and maybe there's uh, some blurry vision in that right eye. Oh, that was a nice right uppercut from Rubicalva. Wow. And Puchetta letting it all hang out here in the final moments of the sixth and final frame. So there it is. Rubicalva most likely wins and stays undefeated. But Doug, I think he got a lot out of this experience. Absolutely. This is uh, one to grow on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after six exciting rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards one more time. How about a hand for both of these featherweights inside the ring tonight? And here are the judges' totals, 60-53, 58-55, and 58-55, all for your winner by unanimous decision. He is still undefeated, Humberto Fili Ruelacala! Rubicalva runs to 9 and 0, and the question that I would have for him and his management in 2019, can you keep this kid on a regular schedule and really see what he has? Yeah, I think their goal should be at least four bouts yeah. in 2019, if not more.